What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Shout out to Big Poppy here, but um, nice Friday night. It's hot. What am I going to do besides try and make some money at Encore? So um, we're heading out there pretty soon, and uh, or we're going to head out there now. It's about 3 o'clock, and going to hit so much traffic driving into Boston, but it is what it is. Um, anyways, I'm going to be playing tonight. Friday night, gonna run things up hopefully. It's gonna be busy, it's gonna be packed, it's gonna be a good time. Every weekend at Encore is a good time. It's got just so many tables, so many things going on and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, let's see how this session goes and we're gonna go into, into some hands, do some stuff and hopefully we, uh, we, we book out with a win. But um, regardless, moving forward, I think I'm gonna go to uh, different casinos next week or next week's videos. I want to hit up um, Twin River again. I want to hit up Traces. I want to hit up MGM Springfield. Probably going to just go and drive whenever, when I have free time to go up to those different spaces because main reason, I just want to record table footage for you guys. That's like literally all I want to do. And uh, I can't do that right now at Encore with, uh, without having permission. So um, we'll see how that goes. But anyways, let's go into today's hands. Hope, wish me luck. This interesting hand we're going to go over here. I have ace nine of hearts in the cutoff and there's an only an open to $15. Action folds all the way back to me, and in position here in the cutoff, I'm going to 3-bet to $45, and he calls. So, we're going to go heads up to a flop of 4, 5, 7, 2 spades out there. He checks, and repping all the overpairs in the world, I bet $60, charging the max for flush draws. He thinks and decides to make the call. The turn is a 10, and uh, isn't a spade, so... I guess all I really have is to just continue barreling and hoping that he's on some kind of draw or just a bunch of overcards. So he checks. I fire for 125, and he thinks for a little bit. He thinks that I have jacks and decides to make a fold. He said he basically said he had king, queen of spades, so uh, makes the fold there. Looks like we were value betting with our ace high. Obviously, that's just exactly what I do. Following hand that we get involved in, I have pocket jacks in the hijack, and uh, there's an under the gun straddle as well. So, under the gun plus one calls the six dollars. Actions onto me, and I raise it up to thirty-five dollars. Under the gun, who it seems fairly tilted, the one who straddled, he makes the call of thirty-five, and now the guy who limp decides to raise it up to a hundred dollars with only seventy-five dollars behind. Um, I just go well into the tank, and there's just I just think of the value hands that could be doing this, and it's really only ace king, and I just don't think that he has that in his range at all. When he limp three bets here, um, especially as a short stack, and it's such a small three bet too, you'd think ace king would probably make it a little bit a whole lot bigger than just a hundred. So um, realizing that it's really just I just don't feel good about it. He has basically all the queens, aces, and kings in the world. So I decided to just lay it down. I tank and fold. The under the gun player who is pretty tilted, he jams and the guy snap calls. Ends up being under the gun player has ace queen and under the gun plus one has pocket queens. And uh, the board runs pretty dry. It's eight, nine, four, ten, king. So made the right fold here. Unfortunately, that I had to fold there, but. Um, I mean, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense, and it didn't seem like I was beating a lot of value hands that would ever limp 3-bet in this spot, especially against this player type. So, um, folded pre, made their decision, and, uh, and yes, you're right, I do have a fold button, surprisingly. The absolute very next hand, I have pocket 10s, and under the player opens up to $8, the player to my right calls, and once again, I think I just got a 3-bet this spot with 10s, ISO, so I choose a sizing of $35 again, and uh, the big blind cold calls, the same player, under the player from last hand, he calls, and um, under the gun player who opened up pre- he raises to 135, facing this 4-bet, looking at his stack, and there's just not enough there, I don't think. And also, just facing a 4-bet, I don't feel really comfortable with, uh, with really playing a huge pot multi way of 10. So, once again, I, it, this is an easier fold for me this time, I think. So, um, I just fold, and the big blind jams it rips it all in for 250 the same guy from last hand and the other guy calls so heads up once again all in and uh, in a four bet pot that i got three that i got four bet in and uh, we're just gonna see what happens the board runs king five five eight king 
under the gun player shows ace king of hearts and he takes it down so once again uh, we're making i guess the right decisions obviously i was ahead pre but um it i was putting getting put into some pretty tough spots two hands back to back in a row weird enough we're in middle position and the very next hand wow we're it's three consecutive hands in a row i don't know what's going on but we got some playable stuff we have four or five of diamonds Actually, not to me, I opened it up to $15 in middle position. The button um, subscriber named Noah, shout out to you. He three bets to $50. And what the hell, dude? I, it's been three hands in a row that I've been three bet or four bets. So, I mean, this time with four or five out of position, I just decide to call. Um, I think if I'm going to hit on the flop, then I'm just going to go with it. But, um, I mean, I think against a static range, once again, like, like a lot of you guys saw earlier, four or five against a static range sometimes could work. So um, let's go heads up to a flop of nine, six, four, two diamonds out there. Bottom pair with the flush draw, baby flush draw, uh, flopped a whole lot of equity. So it's a board I'm really going to love. Um, I check. He decides to bet $75. And I think for a long-ish time, not really, I think for a little bit, but um, I ended up ultimately deciding ending up on flatting here. I could raise, but honestly, just with so much equity, let's just see the run out in the turn and evaluate that. The turn is the ace of clubs. Not the worst card in the world for me. Um, I have a lot of ace x um, of diamonds in my range a lot of the time. And honestly, out of position, I'm going to check, going to see what he does and evaluate that. If he bets, obviously, I think I'm just going to have to get out of the way here. But um, he fortunately checks it back, putting him on hands like tens, jacks, queens, um, maybe king sometimes. Hands that are absolutely afraid of the ace and hates that card. So um, probably going to have to barrel or bet if I miss my uh, diamond draw. So the river is a king of clubs. One of those awesome cards that uh, obviously removes a bunch of commas of kings and puts jacks, queens, tens into really tough decisions. So I'm first to act. I'm going to bet big here for 160. And he ends up folding pocket jacks face up and we take it down. Following hand that we'll go over, I have queen 10 on the button. There's two limps to me. And honestly, I've been super cards at this point. So queen 10 offsuit looks phenomenal uh, in my eyes. So I raised it up to $20. I could just call and flat here in position, but we're just going to take control of the pot here. I raised to 20 and the big blind who absolutely covers me, huge stack in front of him. He raises to 125. One of the limpers calls for less. He jams for a total of eight, about $80 ish and actions onto me. Facing a 6x raise with queen 10 off suits. I'm going to fold here, get out of the way, and um, we're just going to go to a run out for them. For those two, flop comes queen, queen 5. Why did I fold queen 10? Turn is just a little bit better. It gives us quad. It's another queen. And um, we just are watching every all the money go go to waste here and uh the river's a brick i have no idea the big stack shows pocket aces <laughs> so he had the second nuts and ah we, we uh we we literally watch ourselves get um just we just watch ourselves lose the opportunity of doubling up our 500 ish dollar stack so Against the big stack, aces, obviously, it's going to go in every time. And um, we would have been sitting very pretty with quads and doubled up our, our decent-sized stack there. But instead, we folded, we folded to a 6x raise. And um, that's just not the runout you want to see with a shitty hand like Queen-10. Next hand, we have ace-jack offsuit on the button with an under-the-gun straddle. The player to my right, the cutoff, opens up to $20. And I am the only caller. So let's go heads up to a flop of ace, 10, seven, two spades out there. He fires a bit of $30 and with an ace, gonna flat, gonna see what's going on here. So I just make the call. Turn is a three of spades, brings him the spade draw. He checks to me and there's really no point in betting here. I think only better call and um, I, don't, I just don't get value from worse, have a ton of showdown. So um, easy check back for me. The river is now a 10 of spades. And so I'm looking down at my cards, I have the Jack of Spades, so it's a decent card, I think, but um, he bets $50 here. There's only two cards that can beat me, and he could just be bluffing sometimes or trying to value bets. 
it's the worst spades. I don't know. At the end of the day, I just have a bluff catcher with a jack, but um, I decided to just throw in the call, donate some money. He shows pocket kings with the king of spades for the nut flush, and uh, we, uh, we lose that one, unfortunately. I think it's a stupid call long term, but that's just unfortunate. Following hand, I am under the gun, and we have six deuce off suits, and uh, we straddled. So there's four limpers to me, and I'm just going to check. We're going to play six deuce in a straddled pot here, five ways, multi way. So let's do it. Flop comes queen, six deuce, rainbow. Flopping bottom two with probably the worst cards ever, but uh, we're loving the spot. Action not to me. I don't think I can really bet this spot. I could donk lead sometimes, but... Um, for some reason, I just decided to check, and Ashen checks all the way around. Turn is the five of diamonds, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. Ashen checks to me again. Got a, got a bet in this spot, obviously, with especially with a flusher out there. So I bet $25, and the cutoff decides to make the call. Let's go heads up to a river, which is the eight of diamonds. Flush draw completes. Not the best card ever at all for me, so... Um, I check with all the showdown in the world. He fires a bet of $50 here. I hate this bet because I think he's just never value betting worse ever here. So, unfortunately, I decided to just call, throw in 20, 225, 225 green chips, and uh, he shows jack seven of diamonds for the flush, and we get valued, um, unfortunately, just making two really bad calls when the flush gets there, or better flushes get there. The last thing that we'll go over here, I have ace jack of clubs under the gun. I opened up to $15 and only a hijack player calls. He's announced that he's watched a few of my videos in the past, so he has a relative idea of how I play my hands. So um, we'll be cautious here to a certain degree, and uh, let's go heads up to a flop of deuce, five, six, rainbow. And uh, really dry board, and I am just going to see bet $15 here. He raises to $35, and it's such a, it's basically a min raise. I'm never getting away from this spot. So, um, with two overs and a backdoor flush draw, let's just see how it goes. So, I decide to call the extra 20, and let's go to a turn, which is a 10. Um, I check it over to him, and uh, he makes the check behind. River is a queen, so two over cards that could likely hit my range, and um, I'm thinking that. He's got to have got to have a middling pair here a lot of the time, um, or at the very least, like jacks at the the best that he could have. And uh, I'm gonna bet this queen here and uh, rep for look like I'm betting for value. So I bet fifty dollars. He tanks for maybe a minute, minute and a half before making the call. Ace high is obviously never good. I show just to have him show. He tank called with pocket nines, so that is just really, it's it's frustrating to say the least. But that was the last hand that we played this session here at 1-3. There is no outro, real outro, I guess, or live reactions outro to this video, unfortunately. Um, after that last hand, after the hero call with nines, it sent me to a real like spiral of frustration and everything like that with poker um and i just really wasn't able to record an outro or want to record an outro so after the fact let's kind of talk about and break down kind of the, the things that are on my mind and i think i want to address in a later video so um to end the session off at the very least i played for six hours and i lost 151 um, total. So I was in the game for $500 and out of the game for $349 total. Um, I like the first few hours, the first four or five hours actually of the session, I was up like around 300 ish the whole time just cruising. Um, then this, those last three hands that we went over just kind of spiraled out of control and I just started getting tilted and I just had to get out of the table and get out of there. Um, but some of the things that I really wanted to address, and I think I'm going to talk in more depth about it in a different whole separate video, but um, just starting to get really frustrated. I understand that um, doing this is hard, um, and I'm starting to get the effects of it. Uploading every other day for almost the better part of a month is taking a toll on not only my, I guess, like work ethic and like getting burnt out of just grinding out these videos, but more specifically, it's really affecting my poker game as in a ton of people from Boston, ton of people that play at Encore, watch the videos and know how I play. And my image is, it is what it is. The image is exactly what you expect it to be. And it's affecting a lot because 
I mean, I've just got to adjust to people calling me extremely, extremely light. Um, two real instances that really just come out to me is that very last hand with pocket nines. How you can call me in that spot is really disgusting, and that's just how people view me. Um, secondly, that hand where I had ace queen against pocket sevens on a like 10 queen high board or 10 jack high board, 10 king high board, whatever it was, um, and getting called down by pocket sevens to a really large bet that those both instances really shine um, as to how people view my play style and just it's just really unfortunate because moves like that I know are the right moves and it's very profitable long term just with the culmination of posting these videos and just showing everyone how I play and just being super open and transparent has had huge effects on my my not only my play my play style and also just like my motivation to keep going um it's hit me it's hit i've hit a wall recently um i'm gonna have to adjust to all of these things i read all your comments in the section by the way for everyone who's still watching i know that you guys actually care and uh i really appreciate all the constructive criticism i've been getting um i notice all these things and i'm it, i'm just gonna have to adjust with how things are going but um it's, I just wanted to voice this out. I'm probably going to make a whole nother video just going super in-depth with like everything that's been going on in my head because I have been super frustrated recently. Um, my last couple sessions, you can tell it's just it just hasn't been going the way it should go. Um, I'm getting called down a lot more. I am getting 3-bet and raised a ton up the ass. And um, it's exactly how people should be playing given the information that they have about me. I totally respect it, totally understand it. From my perspective right now, it's uh, it's tough, but um, that's just how I wanted to end the video. I'm going to make, I am planning on making a video just to discuss everything a whole lot in more detail, but um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed, um, please leave a like. I really do appreciate everyone's support. Um, comment section has been pretty critical of my play, and I back everything. I back all my decisions. I, I don't know. I'm pretty confident with um, how I play now, but anyways, hopefully you enjoyed Leave a like if you did. I'm going to be done rambling. I'll ramble a whole lot more in a future video, but um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.